believed And tried I can be Happy with me It's so hard to be confident In your abilities But everyone has a special talent In which they can believe Children's Corner. I'm Steve Izan, a big kid at heart. I'm here with Norm Moynihan. We are at the Port Discovery Children's Museum. We're going to take a short break, but please stay with us. We've got a lot coming up. I'm here with my new best friend, Mr. Potato Head. Safari at Port Discovery Children's Museum. I'll do the driving. We're driving like crazy here. We're on Safari. We're at the Port Discovery Children's Museum. Hey, let's go on Safari. We've got a lot of things to see. Hey, I see a cave. Let's go check it out. the secret glyph message. So we're trying our best here. This says heart, that's the lion. Meanwhile, we've got Mr. Potato Head. Looks like Mr. Vegetable Head, though. He's watching over the whole thing. Okay, we're still here in, with Mr. Potato Head. Here's my favorite right here, Pink Bunny Slippers. I have a pair just like this at home. Got the big ears. What else do we have here? We have a and some paste. Look like holes on a scale. So if you put these over here, eventually that scale is going to go down the other side. I'm not really sure what this is. <laughs> Hi, welcome to another episode. I'm here with Nora Moynihan. She is, let's see if I get this right, the director of education and community state. enrichment. And community enrichment, okay. For Port Discovery. And we are here at Port Discovery in beautiful downtown Baltimore. This is a wonderful exhibit. There's a lot of kids running around having a great time. Wonderful time. And we are also in front of one of my favorite childhood favorites, Mr. Potato Head. Yes, Mr. Potato Head is a special traveling exhibition that's going to be here through September. And at Port Discovery, we rotate special exhibitions that travel across the country and invite them to Baltimore for the people who live here. And you say September. Do you have a specific date if our viewers want to get down by a certain date? They can go ahead and visit our website at www.portdiscovery.org. Well, that looks good. And do you know what the next exhibit is that's coming that's of a special nature? Actually, we are right now in the midst of making a decision. We have two possibilities, so they'll have to check our website because it's a surprise. All right. Well, I know our viewers like surprises, so you make sure you check that website. And let's have that website again one more time. www.portdiscovery.org. All right. Well, that sounds good. Well, Nora, besides Mr. Potato Head, which is a very near and dear in my heart, yeah. What else are the kids going to find when they come down? Well, you know, over the past couple of years, we've done a lot of changes. So if you haven't been to Port Discovery lately, you haven't been to Port Discovery. All right. We opened up a Royal Farms convenience store on the first floor where the children can play in a real life environment. And the focus is making healthy, healthy choices in convenient times. Also, we opened up an infant toddler exhibit that is for children up to 32 months, and it's called Todd Trails, located on our second floor. And of course, this past year in October, we opened up Nano Fabulous. Nano technology is all about the science of things that are one, one billion times smaller than the eye can see, and it's very exciting. Wow, well that sounds good, and an example of small things. I mean, what are some nano, nano type of things that we're talking about? Sounds pretty cool, and 
I think probably some of our kids out there could use some of those nano pants right now. <laughs> probably. Oh, maybe so. We talked about Leo the Library Dog. I hate to say it, but decades, fellow viewers. But uh, all of a sudden it starts to come flooding back. It does. Uh, Jack Sprack can eat no fat. His wife can eat no lean. Yes, there's so many wonderful ones. Well, talk about wonderful things. Yeah, Betsy's amazing with that program. She really is. She really is. Let's do the contact information again, because if our viewers didn't have something to write with right now, they probably didn't. Okay. Say, I wish I would have something to write with. So. They can go online www.portdiscovery.org Well, Laura, we're going to have to take a little break. Okay. We'll be right back. Please stay with us. Hi, my name is Andy Hirschberger, and I'm the Associate Curator at Jeffy's Entertainment Museum, and this is uh, Cool Collectibles at Kids Corner. I'd like to show you, right now, one of our personal favorites, a perennial favorite. This is Mr. Potato Head, except he probably doesn't look exactly like your Mr. Potato Head or Toy Story's Mr. Potato Head. This is an early 1968 version, and this isn't even the earliest version of Mr. Potato Head. Do you know what you would get in the first box of Mr. Potato Head? This. That's right. Just things to put into a real potato. You would get a set of eyes, feet, eyebrows, noses, hands, and then you would also have to go to the store and get this, which is a substitute for a real potato, which you would then put your little feet into, put your little eyes into, and when I say your eyes and your feet, I meant the ones that came in the bag, not literally your feet and eyes, and uh, just build yourself up a Mr. Potato Head. Now, Mr. Potato Head has stayed incredibly popular, Thanks in no small part to Toy Story, Toy Story 2, and Toy Story 3, where he was voiced by Don Rickles, where he's now become a sarcastic little devil. So, you're going out of space. Why does your mask not have a back? Huh? Looks like you're going to disintegrate immediately. Hey, why don't you watch it, Mr. Potato Head? Don't shove your eye in my face. It's not my eye. It's your... There you go, Mr. Potato Head. Oh, no, looks like I'm going to be attacked by a big piece of uh, lettuce. I'm not letting show him up. Oh, sorry. Um, this Mr. Potato Head is from Mr. Potato Head on the moon. And as you can see, Mr. Potato Head has got a little dancing stick, a straw hat, and dancing shoes. Mr. Potato Head is a born dancer. This one is a born hopper because he's only got one foot and two eyes. Sort of like a Sesame Street puppet. I almost expect him to go womp, womp, womp. Uh, this was made in 1968 to uh, commemorate the uh, moon landing. And uh, I'm sure Neil Armstrong brought one of these up into space with him to bide his time while he was just sitting in a capsule with three of his close buddies. Uh, of course, their capsule didn't look like a cucumber because in Mr. Potato's universe, everything is a vegetable. What Mr. Potato Head's best gift was was to discourage children from actually eating their vegetables because they now knew that their cucumber was actually a rocket ship Mr. Potato Head was alive, and so was the green pepper that they didn't want to eat anyways. Anyways, Mr. Potato Head has remained popular, but in the 70s and 80s, he became sort of more of a generic character. Just one basic form, Mr. Potato Head, with his interchangeable eyes. Mrs. Potato Head, that seemed to be it. But recently, all sorts of new and exciting uh, people have licensed themselves to Mr. Potato Head, like for example, Beth, I hear you calling, 
But I can't come home right now Me and the boys are playing And we just can't find the sound That's Peter Chris. These are the guests Mr. Potato Head You have uh, Paul Stanley Gene Simmons Ace Freely And of course Peter Chris, the author of Beth the highest-ranking American single for the rock band KISS. And this is the KISS Army uh, of potato heads. So if ever you were trying to tell your mom that you don't like potatoes or you don't want to eat French fries, you can always just say, I'm a member of the KISS Army, and I can't eat my favorite band. I can only listen to them. Of course, a potato lying on a table doesn't make much of a sound. Maybe you threw it against something. It would sound better. Um, Anyway, so Mr. Potato Head is still around, still popular. Well, that's it for today from Cool Kids Collectibles. Make sure uh, we were filmed at Jeppy's Comic World in Jeppy's Entertainment Museum. Uh, these items are on display at Jeppy's Entertainment Museum, so come on down, have a look, see vintage, see contemporary. We have the entire spectrum of the toy universe. Come on. Well, welcome back. Laura, you mentioned earlier an exhibit called Top Trails. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, it's a wonderful exhibit for children, birth to age 32 months. And it's a space where non-mobile babies can work on developmental milestones. Emerging mobile babies have different areas and like the sand dunes to climb on. It's like a little obstacle course that has different sensory activities. And then for the children who are now walking, there's a space for them as well. And the, what, the space is wonderful. And we also have Top Times facilitators who do Jingle Jangle, Rhyme Time, Mother Goose on the Loose, all kinds of wonderful programs. Wow, oh, this is okay. neat. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. So, viewers, let's take a look. Okay. Okay, everybody. Steve and I are going to go inside of Top Trails. It's the exhibit for toddlers, infants and toddlers, and it's modeled after the terrain of Maryland. So you're going to see the sand dunes, you're going to see the, the mountains, you're going to see everything when you go inside here, and it's just so much fun. And all in one small spot? All in one small spot. You hardly have to use any gas. Come on. Stay hard. Let's go. Well, right here we have our black-eyed Susan, which is our, our Maryland state flower. And if you tiptoe over here, we have a place to put our shoes. And this is where that happens, all the activities for the non-mobile babies. There's mirrors to look. And we have all kinds of interesting things in the tidal pond. And we have some signage that's really neat in this space for the parents. For instance, over here it says tidal pools. Growing, smiling, rolling, wiggling too are things that babies like to do. Help your baby bond with you playing games like peekaboo. And throughout the entire exhibit are all kinds of little prompts like that of what to do with your child. And so you'll see we have lots of really beautiful things at our new addition of the sea turtle. Our little sea turtle is really cute. And there's lots of really neat toys in this space. We have receptacles to put dirty toys in so that they're getting washed frequently because small children mouth things. And if you move over this way, we have the emerging mobility activity. And what it is, it's supposed to be the sand dunes. Pull up, stand tall, walk or crawl. Toddlers try to do them all. So when you come in here, the kids have bumps and different little areas and little places to peek in while they're crawling and also learning how to pick themselves up. So it's a very exciting space for our littlest visitors. Now, if you're a nursing mom, we have a wonderful reading space that's really calm and a place to just kind of get away. Sit down here and have a look to find what's new in a picture book. See the color in the page. Reading's fun at every age. Right on the other side of the reading wall, you can come on into the digging area where kids can experiment with sand. Sand, water, they're all the things, the natural elements that children love to use. And in this space, they get to use shovels and pails and these little step-ups and all kinds of fun things for the children to experience. Now, off we go, Steve. Come on, we're going to the mountains. The Laura, where are we going? The mountain trail. Right, the mountain but trail. first, we have our projection pond. And in this pond, you can step in it reacts to the children. Oh, my goodness. So, you can come in this space. This is my favorite. You get wow. to play inside of our leaf can pile. Leaves? Yes, oh, yeah, that isn't works. it great? That works. And it changes to all of the seasons and all of the scapes of Maryland. I wish I could clean my yard of leaves. I know. Can you, you just imagine? Kind of <laughs> <laughs> so let's move on. Steve is our 
actually having fun. I'm having a good time. Oh, yeah, Sam, just a, big kid, just a big kid at heart right here. Oh, I guess we're out of leaves. So now, okay. follow me. Come on, Steve. Up All the right. mountain and down the side. <laughs> In the tunnel, you can hide. Okay. And here we go. All different places for children to climb. Surprises to find. And you can go up the mountain path. And this is great because it allows for physical activity of kid works, except in a more controlled environment for our littlest visitors. Practicing steps. Maybe peeking down on their friends down below. It's going to help you get in shape for Tibet next year. There you go. Yeah, I've been to Tibet. Okay. And then the grand finale. Right now, I have a butterfly garden at my house. Right. Here. We have a butterfly lunch, so you push the button. And here they come. Catch the butterflies. <laughs> and this is a real favorite with the littles. I can imagine. Isn't it great? One, two, three. Yeah. Woo! There go all the leaves. <laughs> How does that work? How Isn't does that it work? great? Well, there's a projection um, screen up there. The projection right, screen's here, and it brings it down, right and it's all a yeah. sensor. This is another good one with the koi. Do you see the fish? Right. You can chase them. Oh, and I can move that fly. Yes. We'll be gone in a minute. Yeah. Move that, can I step on a lily pad? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Wow, that was great. That's I know, cool. isn't it beautiful? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, but you've got another great exhibit. Yes, Wonders of Water. It's exciting, we call it WOW. And in Wonders of Water, the kids can play in Plumber's Park, and there's these little spigots that have water in it. At first it doesn't look like any water's coming out, and then they build with these pipes that are see-through, and they can build beautiful fountains. There's also an area to learn about the water cycle. There's a water table with rocks and all dams and floodplains, and then you can actually get inside of a giant bubble. Ooh, I think I'd like to do that. Uh, I think I could get inside that. that no, giant you bubble. can totally get can inside that. that. Yes, you can. It's oh beautiful. my goodness! Well, this sounds like a lot of fun. It let's, is. Let's take a look. Okay. Two 
you come to Port Discovery. Wow, that was a lot of fun. Uh huh, see, wow. Yeah, it was, wow. Wow, that, that makes a lot of sense. Any last thoughts about Port Discovery Children's Museum? Well, you know, we're always doing wonderful things. Everything from our special events like Noontime New Year, which will be coming, or you have um, Chinese New Year, Martin Luther King, I Have a Dream Weekend. There is something going on in this museum with community partners every single weekend. So always check the website to find out what's going on because there's never a dull moment around here. Well, it certainly sounds like there's not. You can hear in the background. There's a lot of kids. Oh, they're having a ball. They're having a great time. It's a feast for children's so, eyes. That's uh, we're good. Let's go find them. Okay. All right. That's good. Come on, everybody. Come move your body and kick it up. Taking a short break right now. With all that dancing with Laura, she really wore me out. So I've got to rest up before we see the rest of Port Discovery Children's Museum. Stay with us. really really small and then the other important point to the nano exhibit is that when things get small they behave differently I once had a child say you mean like grown-ups and kids but anyway what we have are these three tubes they each have filings inside of it but each filing is of a different size and so you take the magnets and you try and raise the filings and what you'll notice is the big filings will behave differently than the smaller filings and each one will behave a little bit differently. And so as they get smaller, 
you'll notice differences. Now, everybody always thinks of scientists as the people in the white lab coats that work inside with test tubes and glass funnels. Hey, that's what I think. Yeah, but you know, it's so different nowadays. They use computers and they use what's called a clean room. And this is a replica of a clean room and how they work using microscopes and rubber gloves so that they can't touch things. And they even wear something called a bunny suit. And right here, may I hold that for a minute? I want to hold it up so they can see. This is a bunny suit. And we have some so that the children can put them on. And what you do is you climb inside of it, and then you put it on, and you zip it up, and you'll look just like this. And that's what they wear so that no impurities can get on. And it says dress the researchers for work in the clean room. Now, if you come over here, we have a fabulous partnership with the University of Maryland, MRSA. And the students from MRSA have done quite a few interesting things. They've gotten us this probe scope, and this is the way in which one would uh, see nanotechnology. So it's a type of scanning probe, and what it does, it feels it. It doesn't look at it. And if you want to learn how the tip of the probe scope works, we have these activities that the students have created. Now this exhibit is really very, very special in that the exhibit pieces on the tables over here were given to us through NSF, the National Science Foundation, and the NICE Network, the Nano and Formal Science Educators. And basically, University of Maryland added to this whole wonderful experience the programs. So now, children that are four and children that are 40 and their parents and everybody else can come in and learn about nanotechnology. So it's a lot of fun. It looks like a lot of fun. What about kids my age, though? That's what I said. Kids up to 40 or 50 or 60. Well, Laura, I had a great time, but maybe that just proves I'm a big kid. Yeah, it's fun for everyone here. It certainly is. You can hear a lot of kids in the background having a great time. This has been the Children's Corner. I'm Steve Isaiah. Thanks for watching. I've been here with my new best friend, Laura. I believe and try I can